Everybody was kung fu fighting. Those cats were fast as lightning. In fact, it was a little bit frightening, but they fought with expert timing. There were funky Chinamen from funky Chinatown. Wait, am I allowed to say that? Eh, screw it. Can you beat Skyrim as a Khajiit monk? I was inspired to make this video by Space Bear Cadet 746's comment on my Can You Beat Skyrim with Only Iron Equipment video. He suggested an unarmed playthrough where I don't level up at all. What I'm doing today is similar to that, but with a slight twist. I'm still doing unarmed only, but I will be leveling up in the pursuit of maximum unarmed damage. There's quite a lot of ways to increase your unarmed damage, and I want to showcase them all. I also can't wear any armor, because of a line Abjorn has from the Dark Brotherhood about fighting a Khajiit monk that I found amusing, and monks don't wear armor. But I can't wear gauntlets because of the Iron Fist perk from the Heavy Armor Skill Tree. Think of them like wearing brass knuckles. Oh, and I'm using a couple of inconsequential mods, just FYI. I've installed Sky UI so I can have a user interface worth a damn, and SSE display tweaks so I can play at 144Hz, God's intended frame rate. And with that out of the way, let's begin. I wake up, get card to my execution, choose a Khajiit as my race, because no shit, and give myself a funny and original name. After getting rescued by Satan Lizard, I join up with Hadvar, for no other reason than his intro being quicker than Rayloff's, and then beat some Stormcloaks to death who are just sitting there, minding their own business. I pick a lock to obtain some wizard robes, suplex this Stormcloak, question how my spider-fearing brother enjoys this game, punch a bear in the ass, and touch some grass for the first time in my life. After Hadvar suggests splitting up, he says he's glad I decided to stick with him. He introduces me to his family, they tell me to send word to the Jarl about the dragon attack, and I put that request on hold because I yearn for the mines. I use my monk powers to avoid some falling rocks, pollute the cave water with this bandit's rotting corpse, and punch this other bandit so hard I'm pretty sure his balls explode. I then acquire a set of Brawler's Iron Gauntlets, and now we can start this challenge in earnest. I make my way to Bleak Falls Barrow, commit my daily act of animal abuse, and beat up some ugly nerds. Once inside, I punch this guy so hard I break his spine, kill Arvella Swift to satiate my bloodlust, and desecrate some corpses, because respecting the dead is for squares. Deeper in, I use the power of having played this game 10,000 times to solve the door puzzle, learn how to say fuck in Moronican, beat up someone old enough to get that reference, loot the bonus chest behind the waterfall I bet you didn't know about, and give the Golden Claw back to Nick Valentine. On my way to Whiterun, I David the shit out of this Goliath, get a quest from a Khajiit merchant that will prove to be the bane of my existence, and join up with the companions because this game has many exploits and I plan on abusing them. Vilkis tells me to go get his sword sharpened by Yorland. Yorland tells me to don't just do what I'm told, and then tells me to deliver a shield to Aela, and I do what I'm told, no questions asked. Farkas tells me to go beat someone up over in Rorkstead, and I start making my way over there when I come across some rich assholes, whom I ruthlessly slaughter for the crime of having a lot of money in a bad neighborhood. Just outside of Rorkstead, I embrace my inner Sabin and suplex this phantom, and then beat up this defenseless old man for the glory of the companions. Back at Yorvaskar, Skjör sends Farkas and I on a quest to retrieve a fragment of Wuthrad, the racist axe, so we head on down to Dustman's Karen, where I'm sure no startling revelations will occur. I beat up some people's grandpas, get trapped in a cage, some assholes show up, and then Farkas turns into the Wolfman copyright Universal Pictures 1941 and turns said assholes into mincemeat. Further in, I smother some old men in their sleep, grab the fragment of Wuthrad, the racist axe, and play a game of COD Zombies before returning to Yorvaskar and getting inducted into the Companions. Alright, time for some bullshit. Now that I'm a member of the Companions, Yorlin will now act as a smithing trainer. There's a glitch that allows you to fall underneath Whiterun and access Yorlin's merchant chest. This will allow me to power level my smithing skill for free, provided that I have a fast way of leveling up. Well, with the Anniversary Edition DLC, there's an easy way to do just that. In Hobbs Fall Cave, there's a chest with a bunch of stupidly overpowered spells. One of those spells, Unbound Storms, is glitched. If you start casting it, and then fast travel while doing so, the game will think you've been casting it while traveling, and then level your destruction skill up appropriately. By using this in controlled bursts, I can level up, get smithing training from Yorland, drop under Whiterun, steal my money back, and repeat the process until I hit 90 smithing. I'm doing all of this, of course, because of the Fists of Steel perk in the Heavy Armor Tree, which adds the base damage of any gauntlets you are wearing to your arm damage. I plan on smithing a set of Madness Gauntlets and using the Enchantment Alchemy Loop to boost my own arm damage into the Stratosphere. We'll get to what Madness Armor is and how to get it later. 
After getting to level 90 smithing, Marcus sends me to beat up another defenseless schmuck, this time in Falkreath, so I gouge their eyes out with my meaty claws and return to Farkas, who tells me to talk with Skewer. Skewer tells me that he has a surprise for me underneath the Skyforge, so I meet him there late at night, and he reveals that because I've completed three simple tasks that any dipshit with two brain cells could do, I get to join the circle and become a werewolf. So I drink Ayla's blood, turn into a werewolf, run straight to the gate to end the transformation, and wake up in the middle of goddamn nowhere, where Ayla tells me to embrace my inner psychopath and kill a bunch of people who probably don't deserve it. Inside the fort, the Silverhand don't give me much issue, except when they do, and we make it to the inner chamber where the Silverhand leader beats my ass like a bongo drum. Turns out when you level up without increasing your damage or armor, higher level enemies have an easy time of turning your innards into your outards. I eventually best Krev by using Ayla as a meat shield and spamming healing magic and potions. Also, Skewer's dead. Oh no! Anyway... Ayla tasks me with stealing some plants from the Silverhand. So I make my way over to Fort Fellhammer and bum rush my way through the door, and the Silverhand outside make no attempt to follow me in. I steal the plans from the chest right next to the Silverhand leader, and attempt to kill him, but after he turns my butthole inside out a few times, I decide my pride can take one for the team, so I run away like the gutless coward I am. Next I have to retrieve another fragment of Wuthrad, the racist axe, from the Silverhand, so I take a casual stroll on down to Trevor's watch, where I sneak in, grab the fragment, and again run away with my tail between my legs. And as I was fleeing from my fearsome foes, I for chance ran afoul of a fugly fucking orc, so I freed his soul from his filthy form, and forged a pair of fancy gauntlets. That's the dumbest thing I've ever said, and I don't regret it. Kodlak eventually catches wind of our crusade, and tells me that he is not care for vengeance. He then tells me that there's a way to cure his lycanthropy by killing a witch, but tells me that I should kill all of the witches for the sake of vengeance. I, being the bloodthirsty psychopath that I am, enthusiastically agree. And after beating up a bunch of old hags, I decapitate their corpses and return to Yorvaskar, where come to find out the plot has been moving so fast that Kodlak got whiplash and broke his neck. It seems my psychopathy is infectious, as Vilkas decides we should exterminate the Silverhand once and for all. So we make our way down to Driftshade Refuse and send the Dollar Store Winchesters straight to hell. Oh, and we retrieve the fragments of Wuthrad, the racist axe. After setting Kodlak's corpse on fire, the rest of the Circle and I convene in the Underforge, where we discuss how to cure Kodlak of lycanthropy and death, and Yurlin reveals that he's fixed Wuthrad. See? I told you it was racist. After we truck halfway across Skyrim to reach Yizgamor's tomb, Vilkas decides that he's not about that mass murder lifestyle, so Farkas Ael and I rush in and beat up the ghosts of the revered ancestors without him. Further in, Farkas decides that he's too much of a little bitch to handle some giant mating spiders, so he pisses his pants and goes the fuck home. Ael and I make it to the inner chamber, where we meet the ghost of Kodlak. He tells us that inside him, there is one wolf, and we need to curb stomp that wolf until its guts spew out its ass like fucking toothpaste. So we do just that, and as a reward for all my hard work, I'm put in charge of the Companions, an organization that I joined less than a week ago. Now that I'm the harbinger of the Companions, I can force Farkas, the aforementioned pants-pissing baby, to get me free heavy armor training. So after a few rounds of Unbound Storm's bullshittery, I've got 90 heavy armor skill and the Fists of Steel perk. Was it dumb of me to level up past the point I needed for this perk, given my difficulty with fighting high-level enemies? Yes. Yes it was. But we'll deal with the consequences of my dumbassery later. And by later, I mean right the fuck now. Because remember when I got that note from that Khajiit merchant? Well, it's time to follow up on that and kill some bandits in silly armor. I roll up to the Saints camp and lay the smackdown on all their sorry asses, and then free this adorable little monstrosity. I'm naming her Cheryl. I then run up to the seducer's camp and proceed to get my ass beat. I try to lure them apart to fight one-on-one -on -one and still get my ass beat. I eventually discover a group of Imperial Legionaries hanging out in the middle of a blizzard and let them soften up the seducers before swooping in and taking the kills for myself. I also discover another adorable little monstrosity. I'm naming this one Greg. Anyway, I take care of the second seducer's camp by luring a bear into their camp and letting nature take its course. And I take care of the second saint's camp by leading them to a bunch of miners who dull the seducers ablaze with their flesh. Now that I've wiped out the saints and the seducers, I make my way to the solitude sewers, where I start squishing Cheryl and Greg's cousins, using the local spriggans as scratching posts, and getting killed so hard I splatter onto the ceiling. 
Thoron, the local murder hobo, packs powerful spells like Lightning Bolt, Chain Lightning, and Close Wounds, and when his health gets to certain thresholds, he will teleport away and summon one or two fancy Daedra to spit roast me. Deciding that the situation was hopeless in my current state, I once again accept the Lordstone as my savior and return to the sewers and still get spit roasted extra crispy by Thoron and friends. But this time I'm able to steal his journal, which allows me to track down some asshole named Evethra, kill her in cold blood, and steal her journal, telling me not only which boys he was crushing on, but also how to make madness armor. Unfortunately for me, Khajiit merchants don't start selling madness ore until you kill Thoron, and the only other way to get it is in dungeon chests, so I guess I'm doing something else until I can level up some more. I decide I should probably start making some progress on the main story, so I deliver the Dragonstone to Captain Sideburns, and then Jarl Balgriff volun tells me to go defend the city from a dragon. The fight actually goes pretty smoothly. As soon as he lands, I start tearing into his flesh and give him to about half health, and after he lands a second time, I bash his brains in for good and devour his tasty, tasty soul. After Bulgriff talks at me for a solid two minutes, he sends me to High Hrothgar to go meet with the Greybeards, so I buy a horse and have a nice horsey ride up the mountain. This is the last time this horse appears, by the way. He gallops into the void as soon as I enter High Hrothgar. After I prove to the Greybeards that I'm the Dragonborn, I stand in the Winds of Pain just outside the courtyard and cast Restoration spells until I reach level 70 Restoration. I did this for the Necromage perk, which increases spell effectiveness against vampires and undead by 25%. It also increases the effectiveness of perks and enchantments if you're a vampire. I think you can see where I'm going with this. After hearing from every fucking guard in the goddamn country that the Dawn Guard was reforming, I stroll up to Fort Dawn Guard and demand a job. Isron likes the cut of my jib, so he sends me to Dim Hollow Crypt to figure out what the vampires are up to. Once I arrive, I punch the lights out of some pissant vampires, get stabbed by a tetanus spike, make a new friend, fail to find the switch for this door for longer than I'd like to admit, and run away from the final encounter like a little bitch. We roll up to Castle Volknar, and Harkin thanks me for bringing him an Elder Scroll, and his daughter I guess, by turning me into a Vampire Lord. After he teaches me how to be a Vampire Lord, a power I will never use again, he sends me to a crack house to fill his chalice with big red soda. I pick a lock in broad daylight, beat up some more pissant vampires, steal everything that isn't nailed down, get ambushed by who cares and who gives a damn, and send them out of this world like they came in, screaming and shitting themselves. I return to the castle and get a quest from stuck up vampire number 12, who says that there are magic rings that can enhance my vampire powers. So I make my way to North Shriekwind Bastion, fully prepared to bathe in the blood of my enemies, but come to find out the only things here are a bunch of bastard scallies! Skeletons don't have blood, they have marrow! You can't bathe in marrow! How am I supposed to do my Elizabeth Bathroy treatment now? What? Just cause I'm a vampire now doesn't excuse a poor skincare routine. Ahem. Anyway, I reach the top floor, almost get murdered by a master vampire, drink my body weight in potions, snuff the unlife from said master vampire, beat up another grandpa, and retrieve the ring of the beast. Alright, I've powered up enough. It's time to pay back that homeless man in the sewer for what he did to my ego and also my butthole. With my current setup, my unarmed damage is a base of 22, plus 12 from Fists of Steel, plus 12 from my Gauntless Enchantment, plus 20 from my Ring, all multiplied by 1.25, totaling 82.5 damage per punch. And even with all of that, I still have to guzzle almost every health potion I have to stay alive. I'm finally able to put him down after he decides that staying alive is just too much effort, and I then teleport to Whiterun, where I receive the note about the Khajiit merchants having new wares and start preparing to break this game over my knee. I prepare to start the alchemy enchanting loop by purchasing as many snowberries and spriggan saps as I can, and forge a pair of madness gauntlets. Madness armor, by the way, is one of, if not the best armor set in the game. It has a total base armor rating of 114, and its gauntlets have a base armor rating of 19. Which is all well and good, but for two things I learned while writing this video. One is that there is actually a pair of gauntlets with a higher base armor, the Ebony Spell Knight gauntlets, which have a base armor rating of 20, though the whole set has a lesser base armor rating of 112. And two is that the Madness gauntlets are glitched and are unaffected by Fists of Steel. Oops. Ah well, Fists of Steel is about to become irrelevant anyhow. Plus, they look cooler, and I'll fight anyone who says otherwise. After all is said and done, I make a pair of gauntlets that fortify unarmed damage by 18,235, before the Necromage multiplier, of course. Well, the game's over. You can all go home. Oh, you actually want to see me finish the game? 
All right, I guess. I show up at Usengrav and murder everything I see. I then discover that the horn I was looking for has been taken by everyone's favorite character, Delphine. So I go talk to her, she gives me the horn back, we set off to kill a dragon, and I kill that fucker so fast that he fucking teleports, reverse disintegrates, and returns to Bones again. Delphine then sends me to infiltrate a party, so I give my shit to Malborn, give a dude some booze, kill some uptight pricks, and learn that Esburn is a character that exists. I then travel to Riften, purge the homeless, recruit Esburn, and he and Delphine reunite while I stare menacingly into the camera. We then clear out Karspire camp, solve some stupid puzzles, and learn that we need to shout at the devil. I decide to skip a step and go straight to Blackreach, but unfortunately for me, Skyrim decided that this is the one day it actually wanted to function properly because I couldn't glitch my way in. You're supposed to be able to run to a plate that you're holding to glitch through walls, but after trying for 30 fruitless minutes, I give up and enter Blackreach the normal way like a fucking pleb. You might have noticed that I skipped a step too many, and when I arrive at the collapsible staircase, I notice too. So I drag myself to the ass end of the world to talk with another crazy homeless man, attain the magic shapes, return to Blackreach, and get the Elder Scroll. I then climb to the third of the world, meet Parthenax, and he tells me to take my little challenge and shove it up my ass. Unless we want to consider firebenders from Avatar The Last Airbender to be monks, this challenge dies right here. But I got more shit to say, so onward we go. I blind myself by sitting too close to the TV, witness the Warriors of Legend fail to do their one fucking job, knock out Alduin in one punch, and then have to endure the worst quest Bethesda have ever made. Forget anything you learned in history class, season unending is mankind's greatest atrocity. It's just ten grueling, godforsaken minutes of Ulfric and Tullius bitching at each other. This is only the second time I've ever done this quest, because the first time I played it 12 years ago, it left such a bad taste in my mouth that every subsequent playthrough I decided that I'd rather endure 2 hours of mediocrity in the form of the Civil War quest line than 10 minutes of OH MY GOD SHUT THE FUCK UP. I'd say whoever designed this quest should be dry out in the street and shot, but death is too good for them. May whoever designed this quest spouse leave them, their children disown them, and have a flaming cactus made of sandpaper shoved up there. Oh look at that, the quest is over. See, it wasn't that bad. I don't know what you were bitching about. Now that that's over with, we can move on to capturing a dragon, hitching a ride to Skulldofen, beating up Nacrin, and making it to heaven, a place I, nor you for that matter, will be seeing when we die. Anyway, I make my way through the mist, bitch slap heaven's bouncer, enlist the aid of the losers who couldn't kill Alduin last time, finish the world eater in one punch, and prove no, you cannot beat Skyrim as a Khajiit monk. This challenge was a roller coaster. At first it was pretty fun giving the old 1-2 to my enemies, but then I made the mistake of loving up too high too fast and it became a slog. And once I ran the enchanting exploit, all challenge flew out the window. In hindsight, I could have invested in alteration spells to mitigate my combat woes, but it is what it is. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, my name is Mr. Mato 96 and I'll see y'all later.